So we're going to differentiate today using more than one rule. I think today we are going to need, well, let's look at this for a second. Looks like this, doesn't it? We have, I think we have a composite function. So we have this piece right here, don't we, Chloe? Right here, good. Then we have the inside function. So what rule is that? Well, what, what about it? What's the inside rule we're going to use? That's quotient rule, right? So what's the quotient rule? So we're going to use the quotient rule to deal with the inside. The quotient rule is, right, d dx of f of x over g of x, right, is equal to g of x times f prime at x, right, minus f of x, g prime at x, all over the quantity g of x squared. This is, no, it's okay. This is really important. We need to really, really memorize these rules. Um, so that will help us with the part on the inside, right? So I guess just to be clear about it, we're going to use this. Well, that should have worked better, shouldn't it? We're going to use this rule right here for the inside part, right? Uh, and then to look at the inside part, when we look at the inside part, we're going to use, uh, to look at the outside part, we're going to use, what rule is this? Chain rule, right? And the chain rule is that the derivative of f of g of x is equal to exactly f prime at g of x times g prime at x, right? So the only reason we have to do this is because we need we need to get this. We hear the piece we need we need to get this piece right here. It kind of sucks. So we're going to do a bunch of work just to get that little piece there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's I guess let's start somewhere. So let's want to do our quotient rule first. So what we're trying to build now is this, f prime at g of x times g prime at x. And we're going to use the quotient rule to find this piece right here, right? Because we need to find this piece right here. So let's start here. So we'll use the quotient rule to find that, right? So we use the quotient rule here. So we have f of x, all we're going to do here is just take these pieces out of here, right? So we're trying to find the derivative of the inside. So here's the inside of the function, right? Right, we want the derivative of this thing in here, right? So let's find that. And the way that we're going to do that is this. f of x is minus 1. f prime at x is just 3, thank goodness. And then we need... Right? And then this is really weird because we're going to say g of x, but it's not this. We're going to look for g prime of x, but it's not this g prime of x. We're looking at g prime of x at this. So g of x of the, of the inside function is x squared. And g prime at x. Now, let's say it again. This g prime right here. Yeah, right. It's not, right, good for you. It's not this one. We're, this g prime at x is g prime at x of the inside piece, right? The whole thing. Of, I'm sorry, of this bottom piece, right? Mm -hmm. So it's what? It's so it's 2x, right? And this really sucks because we're doing all this side work just to get this one, whoops, sorry, to get this one little piece that we need, aren't we? And we need this one little piece right here, so we have to start after it, so. So let's go. So we have, we're going to take g of x, right, times f prime at x. This is us using our quotient rule, right? Times f of x, g prime at x, right? Is that right? Okay, so we know g of x is x squared plus 3, isn't it? And f prime is just 3, so we'll take this 3 right here and put it here if you don't mind, right? And then f of x is, it's up here, 3x minus, right, so it's 3x minus 1 times times this 2x right here, so this 2x right here, right? Mm -hmm. All over what? G yeah, so over x squared plus 3 squared. squared. 
Now we can simplify this, can't we? Okay. Well, I'm just looking at it, make sure. We're, we're, so let's, right, we can distribute, right? So let's distribute this to here and this to here, right? Distribute this negative sign into here, right? Into here, isn't it? So that makes this, let's do a little bit of that. So if we distribute this in, this becomes negative, doesn't it? Uh -huh. And this becomes positive, is that okay? So I can just get rid of that mess. And then we distribute this into here, right? To here, into here. While we're there, let's do all this distribution too, is that all right? So we have three times x squared is, three x squared plus, plus nine, minus six x squared, plus 2x all over no I'm not gonna yeah and you're right we could have like it's called expanded we could have expanded this out but it would make a mess I don't want to deal with it is that okay yeah. all right so let's gather like terms here remember we're still trying to find g prime at x and it's this g prime at x that we're fishing for right yeah. so we have 3x squared minus 6x squared is negative 3x squared isn't it just gathering like terms, plus 2x, right, plus 9, all over x squared plus 3 squared. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, that was a lot of work, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So then keep, we're going to keep working here, aren't we? Right, our original function was was y equals 3x minus 1, is that right? Yeah. All over x squared, x squared plus 3 and squared. and squared. So now we're going to do this, right? We're going to go back to our chain rule, mm -hmm. right? So let u equal, right, let g of x equal u equal what? 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3, right? Right? Then f of u is just u squared, right? Where'd that come from? Because this is u, right? I'm not, this isn't u, this is, right? Right? Mm -hmm. So this is u inside of here, and what do we do? We squared that, so that f prime at x equals 2u. Equals two u. G of x? It is. It's this exactly. It's this right here. It's really weird, isn't it? So it's this thing, right? Because it says right here, that's g of x. And g of x is 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3, right? g prime at x. It's all this crap that we did up here, isn't it? It's all that this work that we did up here. So it's equal to negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9 right all over plus three squared right mm -hmm. wow right this is really a lot of stuff because we're using so many rules so go back and just start rebuilding now we're right mm -hmm. so now we have now we're going to use that f prime at g of x times g prime at x aren't we uh -huh. so we'll start building it but I'm always confused that we we'll use that for this f prime of g x. I always confuse here. Like right. Here. So we that that's a really good point. So we just take this look. This is f prime. Remember that g of x is u, isn't it? So we're gonna take f. Sorry, this is f prime at u right here, isn't it? Sorry. Right. So it's two times, and we put in what? Yeah, good, that's right. We put in we put this inside piece back in there. So we put this 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3 here, right? Mm -hmm. Times what? Um, this one. Exactly. Times this negative 3x squared plus x plus 9 all over 
x squared plus 3. So this gets really, really messy here, doesn't it? But it's not bad. It's going to simplify it a tiny bit. Whoa, hello. Because we can definitely simplify it a little bit, right? Yep. If I can find it. We can simplify this a little bit because we know this. Oh, this should have been squared at the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Squared down here, right? We know if we multiply this times this, that would just be this thing cubed, won't it? Yeah. So here's our 2. Or this 2 is this 2. 2, 3x minus 1, right? Mm -hmm. Times. Just going to take this negative. I'm not going to actually do all this algebra, to be really honest with you. It's not necessary here. All over this times this is x squared plus 3 cubed, and this is our y prime. It's really a lot of work, isn't it? I know. I agree. Wow. I need a break.